And now for something completely different. Don't go away. Hey gang, it's Paul from Fat Guy Productions coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And today we are going to do something completely different. You may have figured out by now that I'm kind of a spaz and I'm always looking for something new and fun to do. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to tackle something I've never tried before. In this box is a vintage airbrush air compressor. And we're going to restore this sucker starting right now. Let's get to it. I picked this compressor up on eBay. It certainly needs work, but it was listed as operating, so it seemed like a perfect candidate for what I wanted to do. This is a Thomas 600-8 airbrush compressor, and it's powered by an AC-powered induction motor. I don't know much about stuff like this, so I wanted to understand exactly how it worked, and I started to do some research. An induction motor is one that works on the principles of magnetism. The motor is essentially comprised of two electromagnets. The first, the stator, is a stationary electromagnet, and the second, a rotor, is a spinning electromagnet. To achieve torque at the motor shaft, an AC current is applied across the stator. This creates a rotating magnetic field, which in turn induces a current in the rotor. Because of this induced current, the rotor also creates a magnetic field, and it starts to follow the stator due to magnetic attraction. This motor is very ingenious, and I highly suggest a quick Google search for a better explanation than I can provide. Anyhow, once out of the box, I made the questionable decision to not test the operating condition, because honestly to me, the power cord looked a bit sketchy. I decided to go ahead and forge forward and hope for the best. I started by hitting the hardware with some WD-40 and tried to break the compressor down. For the most part, teardown goes pretty well, although there were some screws that didn't want to cooperate. A super important note here is to use a properly sized screwdriver so as not to damage the screw heads. With the end open, you can see the shaft the piston, and the eccentric flywheel. This setup was going to break my back, but we can talk more about that later. Two screws on the head were particularly difficult to crack, so I put a screwdriver bit in a socket wrench and used that so I could get more leverage on the stubborn screws, and it did the trick. With the head finally off, we can see the movement of the piston that compresses the air. It's actually a very simple device, but very effective.
With the other end cap off, we can pull the power plug and see the stator and the rotor. Everything here seems sound. One of the biggest issues motors like this can have is worn out bearings, but these seem just fine. The stator is held in with just two screws. With the power cord and the screws removed, the stator just lifts out. It's super important that you handle the stator with kit gloves. Though it may not appear so, the copper windings on the stator are coated to prevent electrical contact between the windings. If this coating is damaged, it will kill the motor, so handle with care. Now here's where the compressor is going to give me fits. I had planned to pull the rotor, the shaft, the piston, all of it. The eccentric flywheel and the piston are held in with two set screws. But once removed, I still couldn't get them off of the shaft and out of the case. I tried hammering, I tried pullers, you name it, I just could not get them to budge. There was no available technical data I could find on the internet, so, by the time I threw in the towel, I was feeling pretty defeated. After sitting and thinking about it for a while, though, I decided the only path forward was to clean and lube in place and mask the working parts as I stripped and painted the compressor. So, with an updated plan in place, it's time to head to the stripper. I first tried my citrus strip, and it did okay, but far from great. Also, a bit of advice here. Foam brushes get stupid and floppy when used with stripper. I don't recommend them. After letting the stripper work and cleaning everything off, there was just still too much paint left. So I went back to stripper, but this time I broke out some leftover aircraft stripper I had. This did a much better job.
With most of the paint gone, it's time for wire brushing, scraping, and sanding to remove any last vestiges of the original paint. With everything stripped and looking good, it was time to give the stator and the mechanicals left in the casing a good cleaning. For this, I used a cleaner designed for electrical components so as not to damage any of the parts. As I cleaned and inspected the parts, I noticed that the grooves between the heat dissipating fins still had paint and crusty stuff in there. And I just couldn't live with that, so I busted out some more tools and got busy cleaning them out. It was really a big task, but in the end it paid off in spades.
I gave the compressor another good cleaning and then I taped off the sensitive areas with blue painter's tape and newspaper. Once covered, I gave the case one final wipe down to prepare it for primer. After a day to dry, it is time for some paint. I bought some bronze metallic paint for the caps, and I wanted a cream for the body, but I couldn't find just the right thing. So I decided to mix a color with Tamiya acrylics, and then I would clear coat over that later. I used a bunch of white, and I mixed it with tan and brown until I got the color I wanted. To lay this much paint down, I turned to my Posh H airbrush. I briefly thought about using my detailed air gun, but I was only using about an ounce of paint here, and it didn't seem practical, so the Posh was the choice. I picked the Posh because of the large paint capacity and the simple, constant way it could lay down paint. It actually was the perfect choice here. I applied the paint the same way I do on my die-cast cars. I started with a tack coat, then a bunch of medium coats, and I finished it off with several wet coats. Make sure you change your painting pattern so that you get complete coverage. It was really looking nice at this point.
I also used the posh to lay down the House of Color bronze paint I bought on the end caps. The biggest challenge in the entire paint job was getting proper coverage between all the veins. You had to hit them from so many different angles, and you actually had to lay the paint down so heavy that you were on the verge of running. After a day to dry, I started laying down urethane clear coat I got from Bright Vision. This stuff is super clear, it dries rock hard, and it just seemed like it would be the perfect fit here. I think the results will actually speak for themselves.
After about a week of drying time, I'm finally ready to put this thing back together. I start by cleaning up all of the hardware over at a brass bristle brush I have mounted on my bench grinder. I'm using a dielectric lubricant. Again, it's to ensure that there's no damage to any of the electrical components. And once done, it can all go back together. I put the stator back in and carefully screw it down. Now I can check to make sure that the rotor spins inside of the stator without any interference and it in fact glides like butter. Next I'll screw the head back on. I make sure to tighten this down very tightly and I also tighten the screws using a star pattern to make sure that it goes down evenly. Once I'm done with this I can go ahead and turn my attention to the end caps and the power cord.
I got some great vintage looking cloth cord from a place called Vintage Wire and Supply. I'll put a link down below. I also got some vintage looking plugs from them as well. It's a simple two wire job. I stripped back the wire and made the connection with a couple of wire nuts and now I can button the whole thing up.
With a last wipe down, I get a chance to admire just how great it looks before I begin to worry about the test run. Well, here goes nothing. My fingers are crossed. The moment of truth. And we have success. Success, success, success. Awesome. And there you have my fully restored Thomas compressor. Well, there you have it. My restoration of this Thomas 600-8 airbrush compressor. Now, I gotta be honest with you, this is one of the funnest things I've done in a very, very long time. This was out of my wheelhouse. I had to learn about this thing. I had to try new things out. And I just had so much fun with it. I can't even begin to tell you what a great time I had. And I think the results are amazing. I think it's just beautiful. Really, really pleased with the way it came out. I hope you love it too. One of the best things that I got out of this was having to learn about this induction motor. Fascinating. I, I, I cannot tell you enough. You really need to do a Google search for yourself and, and read up on these things and watch some of the videos that are out there because it really is amazing. And honestly, it makes me wonder if as a species, we've really tapped into the power of magnetism as much as we could because it's, it's virtually a magical thing what happens. It, it's just quite amazing. Anyhow, I really do hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and click subscribe if you want. Uh, anyhow, I hope you love... Anyhow, I really hope you loved it. And if you did, please... Anyhow, I really hope you loved it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and click subscribe. Click the little bell and you'll be notified anytime I release a new video. If you have any questions or comments, and I'm sure you will, ask them down below. I love to read everything you guys write. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Until next time, I hope you have an amazing, fantastic, refreshed, rejuvenated, beautiful day. This is Paul from Fat Guy Productions. Be good.